Hi everyone, Chris from Stone Age Gamer here, and welcome back to Stone Age Gaming. So, if you've seen this show before, chances are you're noticing we're in a bit of a different uh, atmosphere. There's a different backdrop, and that's because we're not actually talking about any video games themselves today, or even video game accessories. We're talking about something video game related that I uh, have developed a, a pretty decent fondness for, and that is video games on vinyl! That's right, uh, I am not an audiophile by any means of the... Uh, any stretch of the imagination. I love video game music to death. It's most of what I listen to, to be perfectly honest. But uh, my family recently inherited a, uh, a record player. That's this guy right here. And, um, well, uh, it always seemed kind of weird to me to think about, like, you'd see online advertisements for video game soundtracks on vinyl. Well, isn't the point of vinyl that whole studio quality recording thing, right? There's a very specific sound that comes from vinyl that's different from listening to things digitally, but with old video game soundtracks, they're kind of an inherently digital medium, so what was the point of putting video game music on vinyl? Um, and then I got one as a gift, and it kind of just... It was a really neat experience listening to it that way, and uh, the packaging was amazing, and then I kind of found out that there's, there's more to video game vinyl than just soundtracks. In fact, I got some pretty weird stuff that I'm going to listen to for the first time on this show. So, let's take a look. Alright, this seems like a pretty good place to start because, well, this is the only actual video game soundtrack I officially own on vinyl. Uh, this is the soundtrack to Snake, Rattle, and Roll, which has always been one of my favorite NES soundtracks. Uh, it's by David Wise, one of my all-time favorite video game music composers, and um, it's got a pretty fun story behind it. Uh, my uh, my good friend, uh, who also is a co-host on my video game music podcast called Waveback, he knew how much I loved this soundtrack, and as soon as he found out that this existed on vinyl, he just bought it for me and sent it to me. And this was the first uh, time I had ever listened to video game music on vinyl. Um, so the first thing to notice about this is the, the packaging, which is really quite exceptional. Like, Snake Rat Rattle and Roll didn't have a lot of, like, box art and whatnot on it, and... Uh, you can see the, the the cover art here is totally unique and incredibly cool. Uh, then you get the, the the back of it here it looks like this. So you've got a, uh, I think the blue one was roll, right? This this was rattle and this was roll. Uh, and again, you just got all these great little bits from the game, like all looking super cool and whatnot. Now this actually has the uh, the NES uh, soundtrack on side one and then the uh, Mega Drive soundtrack on side side two because. Um, the game was re-released on the Mega Drive in 16 bits, and it had a totally new soundtrack for some reason. It's all almost all new compositions. What's super cool is the packaging gets even better, because check out the inside of this book. Look at this! It's this amazing, like, just rendition of all the different stages of the game connected together, and and the snakes jumping around doing their thing, there's your, your toilet seat, and there's Bigfoot, and... <laughs> this is so cool looking uh, and seeing such a kind of obscure video game that I love getting this kind of treatment is 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 just insane uh, but it gets even better right so as awesome as this is then you get the actual sleeve that it comes in so here you've got um, uh, that's a that's a pibble the, the things that you do in snake rattle and roll you gotta, you're the snakes you gotta eat the little, little pibbles and then on the back here you've got this really cool uh story from david wise about writing the the mega drive soundtrack and 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 a couple other fun little anecdotes this is a really really cool thing and then of course you have the record itself now when i was a kid records were all black for the most part i'll get back to that but this one here i was in no way prepared for the absolute awesomeness that is this record look at this thing it's like a party uh so there's your, your side a and uh there's your side b and it's you can see it's clear it's got all these really cool paint splatters on it it looks really awesome when it's uh spinning around um and it just sounds really really cool it's a uh, I, I really don't know how to explain it there's nothing i could possibly do in this video uh that can properly uh uh, display how this sounds coming out of vinyl, but it's a really well m mastered record, uh, which is super extra interesting because uh, it turned out, and I had obviously had no idea before this was bought for me as a gift, that somebody I know, uh, somebody I went to school with, who was one of my closest friends that I lost touch with, actually mastered this record. Uh, it was a really fun story fi uh, reconnecting with him after all these years, and if you want to hear about the mastering process, of video game vinyl and like how you make this work as uh, 
how you really engineer sound like this. Uh, we did an interview with him on the Waveback podcast. I'll throw a link to that in the uh, the description of this video. It was a really fascinating interview. Uh, I still don't really understand it, but uh, he did a really good job of breaking it down. So I seemed like I understood it at the time, but I've already forgotten most of the details because uh, it's, uh, well, he's a lot smarter than I am. Okay, next we have this. This is unlicensed as all heck. Uh, this was sent to me by, uh, let's say, parties unknown. Uh, as just an interesting thing, they had found out that I was getting interested in vinyl. I had recently uh, acquired a, a, a vinyl collection. And, uh, well, they sent me this. This is uh, more or less the Super Mario Brothers soundtrack on vinyl. A square record. <laughs> and now... Uh, this, as it, it's only one-sided, see, there's the other side, there's nothing on it, this is where the whole soundtrack is, uh, and then you, it came with this little guy right here, um, so you put this on your record player, and it spins around, and, uh, these will theoretically animate if you look at them. Now, I've never been very good at seeing things like magic eyes or whatever, so anytime I've ever put this on my record, I haven't really been able to see it, but, uh, you know, the sound quality is fine. Uh, it is a it is a very interesting piece. <laughs> it's one of the more unique records I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and, uh, well, yeah, there it is. The Super Mario Brothers soundtrack, unofficially on Vine. Okay, next up, I want to talk about this. Now, this is not actually a video game soundtrack. This is a chiptune record. Um... Uh, Information Chased by BitShifter is one of my favorite albums in any medium. Uh, it, it's like top 10 for me, without a doubt. So the fact that this exists on vinyl is just kind of crazy to me because, I mean, it's there. Um, I'm pretty sure it was done on LSDJ for Game Boy. So this is all Game Boy style chiptunes. It is a phenomenal record. It is such a good album. Uh, and it just recently got put on vinyl. And in such spectacular fashion. I mean, I would have bought this anyway, but the packaging for this is so incredibly cool because, all right, so this is this is what the, the album art looked like no matter what. I've had this thing digitally for ages. Uh, you, know, you bought a CD back in the day. This, this is what it looked like. So when they made it, uh, they made the, uh, the, the slip cover in like pieces. So when you take it out, it looks like the sound waves. If you look in here and here and here, the sound waves are going back and forth uh, through the little uh, dials and stuff there. How cool is that? I, I absolutely love it. Uh, so then you get this, which is also really neat to look at because, um, you know, there's this was the back of the CD, if I remember correctly. I only, I only had this digitally. Um, but then you get this, and I've never seen this before. It's like, well, here's the rest of the machine or whatever it is. Uh, and here's this super garbled version too, which is uh, really wild looking. Uh, and then you have the record itself, which is also incredibly cool. Look at this thing, it's clear blue. It's so cool looking, I love it. It's you know, it's not super clear, it's clear enough to just kind of see through it. It's, um, you got this little Game Boy cart looking thing in the middle there. It's a, uh, this, this, this music is so good. Uh, I cannot possibly recommend listening to this enough. This is just, it's the, some of the most wonderful music I've ever heard. It's a pretty short album. Uh, you can get through it nice and quick. As you can see, this even has uh, the extra track that was added uh, on a re-release a few years back, uh, Time Machine Go. This is um, Chase in it all the way down to Information Chase was pretty much the... Uh, the original record and then this was added uh later it kind of sounds like a, a a nice little bonus track it is a cool track don't get me wrong i like that song but really the uh the tracks themselves from uh you know here to here really do kind of make a cohesive album um information chased by Bitshifter. no matter what medium you get it on you gotta listen to this record it's incredibly good okay now we're gonna take a quick little side trip into this so after I inherited these records, uh, my mom was going through her garage and she found all my old records from when I was a kid. So like this right here was one of the records I listened to the most. I was a huge Monkees fan when I was a kid. And uh, you know, it's the record itself is just, it's scratched all oh, heck, it barely plays anymore, but it does still make noise. But the reason I'm showing this is because I wanted to show off what is still to this day, the coolest looking record I've ever seen in my life. And that is this. 
when we were kids, my sister and I had this record, and this was the exact one that we had, so I guess we still have it. It's the Lady and the Tramp soundtrack, and that's the record! Like, that's not the artwork, that's the actual record! This is the coolest looking record I have ever seen, and I, I can't believe that there aren't more... I mean, I guess, I don't know for sure, I because I'm not a big-time vinyl collector, but I've, I've picked up a handful of... Uh, record since inheriting this record player and nothing has been like this where you've just got actual artwork on the record itself it is so awesome it's just uh you, know, you can tell on the ends it's clear plastic and then they just put a picture on the inside of it and man when we were kids i wasn't even a huge fan of this movie or this soundtrack it's not like i'm some some diehard lady in the tramp fan but this soundtrack my sister and i would put this on our little fisher price record player over and over again just to see it spin, just to look at how, what a cool physical piece this is, because, man, records are just so darn cool. They're got to be one of my favorite forms of media uh, that, that's ever been created. They're just, they're just the coolest darn things. And that brings us, last but not least, to probably the most fascinating bits, these. I was in a retro video game store uh, a long time ago. Goodness, this must have been like 10, 15 years ago. I didn't own a record player or anything like that, but I saw these sitting on a shelf, and I was utterly fascinated by what in the world this could possibly be. It's not the soundtrack. There's no soundtrack to these Atari 2600 games. But uh, any, any excuse to have this artwork this large, like, I mean, these are just some of my favorite uh, video game artwork. It's just one of my favorite artwork, period. Uh, I love this this era of gaming. Um, man, these, these are so cool looking. So just having them this large it was, was worth the price of admission as is. But then I just trying to figure out what exactly were on these things. Like, So on the back of both of them, you've got Missile Command. Uh, <laughs> which is kind of funny, because I mean, why not Asteroids and Yars Revenge? Whatever, Missile Command. Sure, why not? So it says songs included Atari theme, Asteroids, and Time Warp. Now, I have I've never listened to these. Even after getting my record player, I've never actually gotten around to listening to these things. So, um, after I'm done talking about these, uh, we're going to go listen to them for the very first time. But from what I've come to understand, these actually have like a reading of the story of these games on there. Uh, so, you know, here we are, deep in outer space in the Brazak solar system, lives a race of super beings, half man, half fly, known as Yars. When one of their planets is destroyed, the Yars vow to seek revenge against their mortal enemy, the evil Quotile. Fly alongside the Yar warriors as they attack their enemy in thrilling space battle. Take off for excitement with Atari's Yars Revenge. Um... So, like, I already, I already knew Yars Revenge had a cool story, because that was kind of, like, the thing. It came with a little comic book and stuff like that. Uh, but then you had the asteroids. What's what's the story for asteroids? While on a routine mission, the cosmic space patrol ship Intrepid is trapped in a time warp and is rocketed 600 years into the past. Oh, no. It's up to Captain Jim Stanton and his computer sidekick Chip Brain <laughs> to find their way back to safety. Blast off for adventure with Atari's asteroids. Um... So this was Kid Stuff Records. I remember um, I have, I still have upstairs, my mom found those too, the, um, like the record book things, like Scuffy the Tugboat, little golden book things that were read uh, out loud and you would read along with the records. Like that was also Kid Stuff. I think I have a, a Transformers one up there too, something, some sort of Optimus Prime thing. So man, these are copyright 1982. Uh, these are utterly fascinating to me, and I think it's time to finally find out what the heck is on these things. So let's go give them a listen. Alright, so first up, let's give a listen to Yar's Revenge. So this is the, the actual record itself we just looked at. So the first track is Atari Theme by John Braden, it says. Uh, and then we've got Yar's Revenge, uh, and I think it's just going to tell us the story. So let's give it a whirl here. Let's, uh... Throw it on and see what it sounds like. Here we go. Wow. I mean, that's pretty special. 
Uh, let's see if we can get to the story and see what that's like. Well, I gotta say, this is fascinating so far. Uh, so, well, <laughs> I should definitely give this a full listen just to see what it sounds like. But uh, I'm curious to see what what is asteroids actually like. Let's give that one a whirl. Okay, so I've got the asteroids record out here, uh, and it looks like we've got the Atari theme again. Let's see if it's the same one. I mean, I kind of feel like it's gotta be, right? Let's uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, no getting around that. That's the same one. So what does the story sound like on this one? Let's see. Go over here. Hey, patrol ship Intrepid. I'm Captain Jim Stanton. You must be the new trainee who told me about it. Yes, sir, Captain. Where should I sit? I can't go out and see you. Wow. What's the mission, Captain? Asteroids, I hope? Maybe, but it's usually not that exciting. It's a quiet beast. No assets. Nothing like the pirate lane. <laughs> you know, I noticed this in the last one too, where the music in the background all seems to be coming out of a Casio keyboard. And I totally had the Casio keyboard that makes that rhythm and the rhythm that was in the Yars Revenge one. That's amazing. I like my job. Most of the guys I went to school with are punching out silicone chips that are selling robots door to door. Okay, last but not least, let's give this thing a spin. Now, like we said before, uh, I, I've never been very good at seeing these kinds of uh, optical illusions. Uh, and, well, this is a weird looking record since it's square, but if we do this right, we should be able to look somewhere and see these things animate. So let's, uh, let's see what happens when we give it a spin. I guess I can kind of see that. If you fix your eye on one specific spot, you can kind of see the illusion. Like I'm getting it out of the Mario. Huh. Isn't that cool? So now, obviously, like I said before, I have, a, I have a small collection of video game stuff on vinyl. I even have a few more things on the way. I ordered, but by the time we record this, I had ordered the, the Ninja Gaiden ones on vinyl, and I'm really excited to get those and, and hear what those sound like. But uh, there's a ton of video game vinyl out there, and a lot of it's been put together with a lot of love and reference for the source material. And, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff out there. I mean, were these the only two that were like this? I don't know, but uh, I'd love to see if there's any more of that kind of stuff out there and uh, more stories on records and things like that because, uh, well, vinyl is the music medium that I grew up with and it's really fun to kind of get back into it now. So uh, that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you uh, liked what you saw, please comment, like, and subscribe. Please uh, sound off in the comments or send us messages, anything that you know about video game vinyl. Um, are there any uh, video game soundtracks that you own on vinyl that have like a really cool packaging or anything like that or any other old records related to, to video game music. I mean, do you have Pac-Man Fever on vinyl? I should probably track that one down. That sounds pretty fun. Uh, thanks again for watching everybody. On behalf of all of us here at Stone Age Gamer, keep playing games. The Zorlan Cannon. The Zorlan Cannon is capable of firing a pulsating fireball which can destroy everything in its path. But, alas, 